you're a real estate investor and you've been around for a while and watch podcasts and participated in networking events and courses and things like that, you've probably heard the term driving for dollars. And driving for dollars is essentially going around in neighborhoods and looking for vacant and distressed properties. So properties that have overgrown yards, uh, boarded up, you know, no eaves troughs or downspouts, just dingy, uncared for properties that you could potentially pull up information on, find out who the owner is and have a conversation, get the property off market and save yourself a boatload, add value to that property and then either keep it building up equity or sell it for financial gain through a flip. Driving for contractors is very much the same. Contractors are everywhere. And if you use a part of the brain called the reticular activating system, which is essentially a filter of information. So we get inputs every second from all kinds of different sources through our eyes and ears specifically, but also through our nose and other senses. And the job of the reticular activating system is to filter the, the information that's most important to you. So let me give you an example of the reticular activating system in action. If you've ever bought a car and you've done research on that car before and you're not an impulse shopper, especially on something that is tens of thousands of dollars potentially, you probably notice that this car you're interested in has started to pop up everywhere. You're seeing it everywhere, at every light, at every stop sign, at every parking lot. This car is all of a sudden, it's everywhere. And that's because you've highlighted it as something important to you. So your brain's reticular activating system is filtering through all of those other cars, and now you're able to spot one that you've highlighted as important. This works very much the same when it comes to driving for contractors because there is no shortage of contractors. If you start paying attention, you're going to see branded work vehicles. You're going to see yard signs, billboards, advertisements on buses and bus stops in parking lots and not just building supply or big box store parking lots, but just you know, when you go grocery shopping, when you go to the gym, these, it's going to hit you in the face that contractors are everywhere. And when you see these, take a picture, right? Save it for later, then contact the contract. Do a little bit more research online through some of the other ways that I mentioned. Pull up more information on, on social media, on Google, and do a little bit more digging to see if it makes sense to contact that contractor for your property rehabs. The more you pay attention, the more contractors you spot the more potential candidates that you'll have for your project. So there you have it. There are my eight different ways for you to find contractors for your next future property rehabs. Just to recap, number one, you have family, friends, and your REI network. Number two, you have power team members. Number three, you have online sources, Google, websites, social media. You have number four, builder and construction associations, also adding networks like the BNI and Small Business Chamber of Commerce in your town or city as part of that. Number five, building material suppliers. Very effective way to build up a trades list and get recommendations in smaller towns. Number six, other contractors. Highly effective way to build up a list of contractors by using contractors who have cross paths with others in their industry at some point and know who's who in town, who to stay away from, who to work with, who does good work, who does bad work, who pays, who doesn't pay. Number seven, and this one's a little sneaky, but instead of other contractors, you are looking for the subcontractors of larger contractors. Who are they using? Because they're hiring them and they're putting their markup on it, charging it to their customers. If you can bypass the middleman and work directly with that smaller guy, building up a rapport with them first, that could benefit you in the long run, especially if you're not just doing a one-off project, but you're doing multiple projects or have plans to do multiple projects in the future. This is someone that you can continue to use. And number eight is driving for contractors. As I mentioned, contractors are everywhere, and this is a very effective way for you to source contractors. Definitely use it. Just like driving for dollars, if you're driving for contractors, eventually you're going to find a contractor that does good work, that's very communicative with you, very organized, very professional, trustworthy, and reliable, someone that you continue to use again on not only this 
project that you have planned, but future projects.